Welcome to Weather and Climate Chat. I am Monsoon Mike Regensberger, and with me is my uh, weekly co-host, Dr. Michael Davis. Dr. Davis, welcome. Thanks for having me again. Yeah, and this is a special show because we're taking Weather and Climate Chat on the road for the first time. We've been doing this show for years or this podcast for years, but this is the first time we're taking it on the road. You were nice enough to invite me to your class. Uh, So tell us a little bit about where we are. We are currently broadcasting from the Academic Forum, Room 202 on Kutztown University's campus, and we are going to be having our discussion with my map discussion part of Geography 204. And I have my students here from meteorology. They're all in the background. I don't know if they even want to speak up, but <laughs> you can keep going. All right. <laughs> That's what I like to hear. <laughs> there you go. And we're going to be talking exclusively about Hurricane Florence today. Yeah, each and every Which week. just recently became Category 4. Right, as of like about a half hour ago. Yeah, usually we come up with a topic each and every week after we discuss the weather, but I think our topic pretty much has found itself this week, everybody's eyes toward Florence. So That is right. So what do we have, Dr. Davis? Uh, starting off with the surface chart mm-hmm. today, if we have a look at that, we're going to see Florence pretty much uh, several hundred miles off of the coast of South Carolina, I believe, mm-hmm. at this point. Right. And it is moving still west, correct? Yes. Last I saw, it was moving west. Yeah, I believe it's still I don't know west. if it's begun its northwesterly trek yet. I haven't looked that closely yet, but, but I believe, yeah. Just works. off the map, unfortunately, here. Right. But... It is coming in, being steered by the subtropical ridge, the Mm -hmm. high pressure sitting out over the Atlantic Ocean. It's projected to come in right around southeastern North Carolina at this point. Southeastern North Carolina. And run into the stationary front and the cold front that's trailing behind it. Right. And at that point, we may get some actual uh, stalling or slowdown of the movement of the hurricane. I think that's the biggest concern, Dr. Davis. And if you, we all remember Hurricane Harvey last year, what Harvey did over Texas, it kind of just literally sat over Houston for days on end. And I think some areas had some ridiculous numbers, like 50, 60 inches of rain. Yes. So I think that's the concern here is there's not a whole lot of steering motion once this thing moves over the coast and it could potentially sit over North Carolina for a little bit of time. Because if we look at the jet stream, the position of the main steering mechanism Mm -hmm. in the atmosphere right now. We have it well to our north. Mm -hmm. See, the jet stream is all the way up here, pretty much in southern Canada, the Great Lakes. And there's really nothing that's going to be pushing uh, Florence out to sea like what would normally be happening with historical hurricanes moving out uh, to sea because of the westerly winds uh, enacting itself upon it. And I just pulled up the spaghetti charts mm-hmm. that look at all the different weather models. That's that some pretty good see. consensus there. And yeah. yes, the track is definitely well within, I would say, good confidence at least, uh, maybe 100, 200 miles or so mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. wide. But then when they reach North Carolina, they pretty much all stop. Right. The forward momentum pretty much stalls out and sits over North Carolina. And that could be a big problem, especially for coastal areas that aren't very high above sea level. How unusual is it, Dr. Davis, that we could uh, that we saw that Harvey last year and potentially another storm this year that just comes in and instead of just keep moving on, just kind of sits. Seems to be something new in in recent years that I'm seeing. Yeah, it is somewhat rare. In fact, almost unheard of. Um, I don't know if you were seeing it online, but they were talking about the Hurricane um, Archive. Mm hmm. And looking at all the hurricanes in the historical database that have happened where um, Florence is currently located. Right. And not one of them struck the U.S. Right. But one of them, but none of them were moving in a westerly direction. All of them were moving a northwest direction. Right. Associated with the high pressure system steering them. Right. This one is a little, uh, goes against the grain, I guess I'll call it. A little different, yeah. And then if you move it further west to where it currently is now, we do have one or two that have struck the United States. But from this point where Florence was to where it is now, we really haven't seen any sort of storm make landfall here. And the synoptic environment that we find uh, Florence in is, I think, somewhat similar to what we saw with Harvey right. with the weakening of the uh, jet stream, uh, the jet stream being way far to the north and not having any sort of steering mechanism, you're going to have that storm stay in place and potentially drop 30, maybe even 40 inches of rain from what we've been seeing. That would be absolutely devastating. Uh, And uh, 
I, I think an, another concern with the storm is, like, like you said, you know, where the way it would come in and just kind of sit there. But I think that a lot everybody's question is, you know, we have really good model consensus to, you know, somewhere along southern North Carolina and northern South Carolina, but it's what Florence does afterwards. And the models have kind of like waffled a little bit on that. Of course, everybody's question is, do we get any effects he up here in the mid-Atlantic? And uh, I'm thoughts? thinking no at this point. Right now, yeah, I don't really see it. We may get some shower activity mm -hmm. and some moisture, but we're not going to get anything serious like what we potentially were seeing in the models uh, as early as, say, Thursday or Friday right. when the storm was off the New Jersey coast or even going into Long Island. So what do you think helps protect us uh, Protect us from the storm coming up this year? I, I think way. two things are happening here. One is that we saw that trough mm -hmm. that was in the eastern United States pretty much sets up as a wall. I mentioned that last night when and we were chatting, yeah. as the storm comes in, it runs into that wall, and it can't go inward any further because of loss of the steering. Right. And stays put. The other thing, if I can jump back here, see if I can do that somewhat gracefully here, is that there's a high pressure that looks like it's starting to build across the Great Lakes. Right. Uh, currently in Wisconsin here. Mm -hmm. And that high pressure is going to be strengthening over time and pretty much acting like a stone in a river and blocking uh, any forward momentum that. Florence may have. So I right. think the combination of those two are going to limit the amount of uh, depth that Florence actually goes inland. Okay. So obviously, if anybody here has any uh, interests along the Carolina coast, um, I, I know there's already states of emergency going up in that area. You're going mm -hmm. to want to you know, tell your friends or anybody going to any you know, schools down that way that there could be some pretty uh, potentially historic impacts down there. And I don't know what's going to happen with the intensity either. Right. Um, last I saw, maxing out about 145 miles an hour right before landfall, right. which at this point seems to be around Thursday morning. Correct. I don't know if you saw anything different. Yeah, I mean, we can bring up the uh, – hold on. Do we think it's going to go to a Category 5? I. Uh, don't know. Well, that's, that's a very good question. Category you, 5 being the strongest hurricane you can get on the Saffir-Simpson scale of oh, 155 sorry. miles an hour or oh, greater. Uh, let me find. I personally think go. it won't, but I could be wrong. Right, yeah. And I think we've seen a couple of storms in the past couple of years that have just kind of surprised us a little bit and have just kind of just blown up there. Uh, I'm just looking at the latest uh, GFS model, which came out at uh, noon. And it, there she is down there. And well, see, now that's interesting. Yeah, the GFS stays offshore. The GFS, the latest GFS now kind of keeps it just offshore. Kind Maybe of on the Outer Banks. Bat batters the Outer Banks. There's the Outer Banks right there. Uh, then it almost does kind of this little loop-de-loop -loop thing <laughs> here because <laughs> it's, you know, that high pressure and that trough kind of blocking it. And <laughs> wow, does a crazy little loop-de-loop -loop and then comes in on onshore next Monday. So every model run, we're seeing something... Slightly but even different. if that resolution does come to pass, you're still going to have a tremendous amount of rain. Yeah. I mean, uh, just very life threatening storm just surge. Just imagine living right here. Okay. You start having the hurricane force winds, tropical storm force winds coming in around, you know, 7 a.m., 8 a.m. Thursday. And here we are Friday. Here we are Saturday. Here we are Sunday. Here we are Monday. Here we are Tuesday. Yeah, if I lived right there, I'd be pretty concerned. This could be almost 96 four, hours straight like four of straight days hurricane of force hurricane winds. conditions. That's very concerning for eastern North Carolina. Mm -hmm. so, I would say so. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, and of course, we always look at other models as well. Uh, the Canadian. Canadian model, I don't think kind of does quite that. Uh, this, this site's a little bit slow. I like this site, but it's a little slow sometimes. Um, What's the European doing? Yeah, I'll take that. Latest European, which would have come out, uh, let's see, that would have been overnight, brings her in uh, a little bit further south. So that's more toward more Myrtle northern, Beach, no, Myrtle Beach, northern Charleston, South Carolina. Doesn't sit. The, this this model kind of keeps keeps her moving, and she's in western nor, uh, North Carolina, weakening at that point, uh, and then. Kind of does a little loop de loop and back out, but that's a, so the European would be a best case solution, I guess you could say, for North Carolina because it doesn't quite sit. Um, and this is something I'm sure you talk with your class about a lot, Dr. Davis. Here we have two very you know respected models, the European and the American model, both doing fairly 
different solutions. Uh, what do you think they're disagreeing on with that sitting over North Carolina or Eastern for days versus kind of just going in and out and gone? It could be the placement of the actual trough, the location of that, temperature differences, right. um, subtle uh, microscale features that you have in the climate model or weather model in this case. The other thing, too, is that historically the GFS model, which I think a lot of American scientists like to favor. Right. It has a lot of waffling to it where it, it does. goes from yeah. one extreme to another um, or has the storm potentially one location. Next run, it's several hundred miles Somewhere away else, in right, another yeah. area. While the European, I think, has a greater amount of consistency between okay. those model runs. So it's just the... Uh, framework, the computational power that I think the Europeans have over the Americans at this point. Well, let's hope that the European model is correct because it's still devastating, but it, maybe it's not quite as devastating because it's not sitting over the, the If uh, I had banks. to pick one, definitely the European right. because you want that storm moving. You want that storm moving and not sitting there for four days. Unlike Harvey, that you could walk faster than Harvey was moving at one yeah. point. And I think, what were some of those final totals? Like 50 some inches of rain, 60 uh, inches of 60 rain? 60 inches. I inches. believe that was the m most rainfall ever in the continental United States from one uh, storm event. Right. So... All right, so we definitely have some. So you know, the uh, great model consensus up until this weekend, and then things kind of, uh, you know, change a little bit. You know, and we have to watch where you know if we get more of consensus with what happens to Florence after after landfall. But um, definitely a concerning situation for our friends down in the Carolinas. It also should be pointed out that this rain that we're currently experiencing is not associated with Florence. This is actually associated with a little bit from a prior named storm, from Gordon. Gordon. Gordon, which came in, uh, what was that, off of Last uh, week, I think, yeah, at this time. came up here and kind of joined up forces with the front, and uh, yeah, so that's that's what this is about. This was a very raw, uh, just talking a little bit about our own yeah. weather, we, we had a little, a little bit of a body shock. We went from heat indices of over 100 to almost November-like chill in the air yesterday. That was nuts. That was indeed yeah. nuts because of the... Uh, cloud coverage we had right. and the heavy rainfall leading to evaporation, uh, yeah. the absorption of latent energy, so it felt colder. I don't think we got out of the 60s. I mean, I don't think we got out of the 50s. I'm sorry. Not, not where I, I live a little bit north of here, so it's even more pronounced. My high yesterday in Auburn was 58 degrees. That's about low, what I was at. And too. my low was 52. So, you know. And I, the National Weather Service today for Kutztown had a high temperature of 76 and a low temperature at night of 76. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you see that a lot in situations like this. So short term, I mean, just getting a little bit off Florence, we always like to, as part of our little podcast, talk about our own weather. What, what do you think the weather's? This looks like a fairly unsettled week, even though we're not going to hopefully get direct impact. Pretty much rain Florence. all week. Yeah, it looks like kind of a... Uh, and I'm not even going to touch Isaac and Helene that are out there. Too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we, there's a lot more out there, unfortunately. There are two more hurricanes out in the Atlantic. Ocean right now, Helene and Isaac. Yeah, but it just They're looks like much an further away though. Yeah, it looks just kind of like an unsettled week here. After even after Gordon uh, heads out tomorrow, it looks like Tuesday kind of stays showery in our area. Wednesday continued showery, turns a little more humid, a little, little muggier again. Yeah, that moisture is still going to stick around. That moisture is going to stick around, and then we kind of see what Florence does. But yeah, fortunately, not looking like she affects us directly. Uh, if of course you know. Bad beach conditions, you could say, rip currents, and you know, might not. I wouldn't go anywhere near the beach. I don't. I probably wouldn't be uh, doing anything crazy at the South, uh, Jersey beaches this weekend, for sure. No, though. I wouldn't go anywhere. But of near. course, you always have one or two jokers that go out there and you know cause emergency officials to have to go rescue them. But don't don't be one of them, please. So, <laughs> um, so, so that's our our our, our uh, segment so far. Any other further comments, Doctor Davis? I don't have any. Okay. Well, thank you so much for listening to Weather and Climate Chat. Our weekly segment will be back in the studio again next week. Thanks for joining me, Dr. Davis. Always a pleasure. All right.